Well, thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to continue where we left off last time as we cut and placed our spars. Today, we're going to get those installed, glued and screwed, and uh, make sure that's fastened down, buttoned up tight before we put the roof on. So, before we get started, let me show you my setup that I've got so we can uh, install these spars. All right, so the first thing I've done is I laid down some paper here. Uh, so when we glue on this spar, any drippage comes down. We don't want to put it on our countertop. We'll catch it with the paper here, and then we can just throw that away when we're finished. So we are going to start with our first spar and our first braces here on each side. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and pre-drill some holes that we'll be attaching to the cabin itself. And then we will put down some glue, fasten that on, clamp this in place across the bottom here, and we'll let that set up a little bit. And while that's curing, we will go ahead and put some pocket screws on our little braces here on each end. So when we put our spars in, we put our braces, everything's cured, then we can go ahead and fasten to the spars uh, as we progress along as we go over the top and it should make for a good rigid strong ceiling so the first thing that i did is i set up my drill press here with the bit i'm going to use to countersink our holes into our spars and i've got it set to the proper depth and i also placed a wooden block here and i'll give you a close-up shot of that as we place our spars in here uh, it's going to be uh, landing in the same spot on each spar each time. So uh, that's my first setup. So let me give you a shot of what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. So this is a sample of our spar. And our spar is going to be going into our sidewall, which is a half inch thick. So what I've done is put a block here, figured out where the spacing is for my half inch thickness. And then on the center of each one of these pieces of wood that I've glued together to make my spar, I have placed a, just a mark where I want to drill the holes. That block will center me in that half inch space. So when I get ready to drill each one, I can take it down to the depth that I need and each block... Let me wrestle with this. Each block is going to have the same hole and the same spacing and uh, it's center of our half inch piece of plywood for our sidewalls. So we know that we've got a good uh, contact and when we put our fastener in that we've got a good bite into the wood and I'm not going to go out the side, inside or outside and splinter that piece of wood. Now once I pre-drill and countersink all my holes, I mean it's a smaller bit because of the hole that I want is going to be the exact size of the screw head. So I don't want to fasten this piece of wood. I want to fasten this piece of wood to the side wall. So I want the inside hole to be a little bit larger. And for that, I'm going to be using a 1164th uh, bit that once I pre-drill these holes, then I will come back and I will drill out these holes a little bit larger so that our fastener can actually go through and then we will fasten to our half inch piece of plywood. This will all make sense as we go forward. Then as we put our spar in place, we're at the we're like center of our half inch piece of plywood here for our sidewalls. Then I'm going to come back in with a 764 and I'm going to pre-drill into our sidewall to accept the fastener here. I don't want to just start drilling into it because then it might splinter our wood, so we're going to pre-drill down into the sidewall. That way our fastener is going to get a good bite in there and it's going to hold it in place. Then once our spars are fastened to the wall, then we have our spacer blocks on each side as we follow around the contour of the trailer. We're going to put a pocket hole drill on each side. That is going to fasten into our spars uh, from front to back. We will glue the crap out of that thing and for this, uh, 
Harbor Freight, 60 bucks. Pocket hole jig. Aluminum. Sturdy construction. Love this thing. Works great. I don't know what else to say about it, but we will be placing that in here, just like so, and we will put our pilot hole in there, and then once those holes are drilled, then we will put this in place and then we can fasten into our spars front and back. We'll glue that to the sides, we'll glue that to the bottom, and this ceiling is not going to go anywhere. I know that when I installed this, I just used upholstery staple, staples. They were like 5 8 inch depth, and uh, if I go inside and pound on the top, this whole thing is going to come loose, but with these fastened to the side and the spars, that ceiling is going to be permanent. So I'm pretty confident with that and going to be happy with it. Now for these spars that have a large gap underneath because this ceiling is pretty flimsy, like I said it's an eighth of an inch thick, what I'm going to use is contact cement. I'm going to mark where my spar lays out. Then I'll put a coat of adhesive on both the spar and the ceiling and once that's cured I will fasten the spar down and then I'll push the ceiling up and that's going to make contact and stick on there super solid. And for that we will be using the contact cement that I used um, when I put on the side walls for the, with the Phylon. So that's going to make a good adhesion it's going to seal that ceiling up to the spar and once that's complete then I will run a bead of 3M 5200 around the, uh, the spar and the ceiling. That will make sure that nothing comes loose. Everything's going to be solid and in place. Yeah, it's going to work out just fine. And of course we're going to use our Tight Bond 2 Premium Wood Glue. Da, da, da. And to fasten our spars to our side walls, we're going to use number 8 by 2.5 inch screws. Uh, these are a nice good wood screw. They're an all purpose screw. Those are going to, uh, they've got a nice coarse thread, so it's going to give a good bite and suck down that spar right onto the side wall. Once everything's fastened down, and we've got our pocket holes, then we are going to use a one and a half inch Craig pocket hole screw, and that is going to give a nice bite into the spars. Once all the glue and everything is set and dry, uh, you could probably roll this thing over and damage everything but the spars. Ha <laughs> ha! Alright, so that's my setup. I've got everything in place. Now all we have to do set those spars. So let's take the spars one at a time and we'll get things fastened down and we'll move all the way to the front and get those in place. Uh, then we'll work on some bracing for the back here and for our exhaust fan in the center. Then we'll take a look at how we're going to do the electrical and move forward. So let's get to building.
right, so our first bar is set. We've got our glue spread out on the ends. We've got it down here on the bottom. We've got things clamped up. I use a piece of wood here on the bottom so I can clamp, pinch this uh, ceiling through, get it clamped up. I've got glue easing out all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. We're going to allow this to cure for a little bit before we put our second spar in here. And then uh, we'll get that fastened down. We'll get that glued on. And then we'll start on our spacers. All right. Yep, coming along. All right, it's been about half hour, 45 minutes for this here to set. So we removed a couple of clamps, spread these out. That's still going to hold this in place. Now we're ready to set the second spar behind here. And uh, that's going to help support the lid. So what I've done is on this particular edge, I beveled that at two degrees, so when I set it in place, it'll actually set up flush against this piece of wood. So it's <clears throat> it's going to set flush and still be uh, along our radius here. And when I get this in place, what I'll do is I'll take a couple of pieces of wood, set this in place, clamp that down so I can keep the top here pretty much flush with this spar. And then we'll also clamp in this direction until our glue dries. We'll get that fastened on. Then this section's done. We can go ahead and start working on our spacers. Uh, I just want to make sure that this back section here is nice and solid so when we install our lid and everything begins to operate that nothing's flexing and giving way so I want it to last some years you know hopefully it lasts longer than uh, than I'll be alive cool let's get that spar installed first thing we're gonna do pre-drill Next, we're going to spread some glue. Now we'll put it in place. Oh yeah. And then we'll fasten it down with some screws on each side and then we'll get things clamped up. Now that our spar is all glued up and we have fasteners on both sides, now we're going to clamp this down so it's uh, pretty flush with the top of the other one. So we'll go here in the center. Now that's pushing down. Now we'll tighten it up with some more clamps here. Now we let it dry. Now while everything over there is curing, we're going to go ahead and put some pocket screws into our spacers here. We're just going to center those up, clamp it in place. I'm going to use the top hole. And voila! Now we're ready to fasten this one in place. 
while our glue is doing its thing and our clamps are doing their things, we're going to go ahead and pre-drill some holes in the back side of this and we're going to screw fasten into our first spar with two and a half inch drywall screws. I'm probably going to use about six of them across here. That way I know that these things are going to stay in place. I won't have to worry about them. Let's get them installed. Now that we've got everything glued and attached with screws and fastened down, now it's time to take off the clamps. Solid. Alright, now that we've got our first set of spars installed, now it's time to install our spacers. So I'm going to apply a little glue on the edge put it on the bottom, put it on the back side, put this in place, clamp it down, and we'll fasten a screw in it, then we can move to the next spar. Now while the first set of spacers are kind of set in place, clamped and glued, we're going to let those set up for a little while and in the meantime we're going to go ahead and prep our second spar, our second set of spar and uh, we'll get that in position and I think we can actually glue fasten that one down then we'll just continue moving forward. Yep. Alright, so the old adage is true. Two steps forward one step back. So we got our first spars set, doubled up. First set of spacers set. We've got our next spar set. Got our next set of spacers set. Now we're going to back up, remove these clamps, and we're going to go ahead and put our screws in our pocket holes on each side. That'll secure that. And then while we're uh, getting ready to fit the next spar, once that's cured, then we'll back up and we'll fasten the screws on the spacers on this one. And that's how we're going to continue all the way to the front. We've tackled the hills. Let's take care of the valleys. So I've got this huge gap under here. My spar is prepped. It's pre-drilled. So now we're going to pull that up. We're going to apply contact cement here. Let it cure out. Then we'll set everything in place. Fasten it down. Go on the inside. And take our roller. And roll that ceiling out. And that should take that little valley out of there, right to that wood. Let's do it. So I set my spar in place, drew me a couple lines so I know where to put my glue. So we're going to go ahead and start spreading that adhesive on here. We'll put it on kind of thick. So while our glue dries, what we will do now is take our other spacers. We'll go ahead and pocket hole drill those. And we'll go ahead and prep the other spar. And then uh, about 20 minutes, we'll be able to set this in place, fasten it on both sides, and then we can push it up and seal that little gap there. 
and we can move forward to the next one. All right, now that our glue has had time to dry, now we're going to flip it over, put it in place, fasten the ends, and then we'll try to press everything up, and hopefully it sticks. Side, press everything up and hopefully it sticks. I think that's going to work. All right, so we're through the roadblocks. Okay, so we've got the back installed, we've got uh, double spars here on the back, we've got our spacer set, and we're about uh, third to fourth spar in. So, everything's working fine, contact cement, pushing the ceiling up, made good contact. We'll run a bead of 5200 across that, that isn't going to go anywhere. So, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this, same way that you saw me do these. And then uh, when we're done, eh, I'll give you a shot. All right, I'm happy to say that all of my spars and spacers are now installed, glued, contact cement, screwed, so everything's in place, and now it's a pretty solid piece. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some spacers here, some braces in the back, and uh, for our ceiling fan. We'll get those made up, we'll get those installed, and then we'll take a look at some wiring. I still have to plan that out, figure out what kind of lights I want to use. It's just going to be a pretty simple setup. A couple of lights up in the interior. We'll bring the wire back to the hatch. We'll have a light here in the hatch, one or two. and. Uh, that's about it. Battery up front, so nothing too deluxe about it. We'll just keep it as simple as we can and uh, enjoy it when we get it out there. So let me give you a shot of what this thing looks like now that it's done. Of course we've got the double spars here on the back, spacers on each side, another spar. Everything is sealed up pretty tight in between each of the spars and the ceiling and uh, I think it looks pretty good. I am uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. Yep, that's going to work great. We'll get the wiring in, we'll put some insulation in. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, once I run the wiring down through, we're going to exit here in the front uh, for our battery, and I've got something in mind for that, so you'll have to stay tuned. Yeah, it's starting to look really good. So, next step is uh, go ahead and frame in for my ceiling fan. And then also here on the back, we're going to install a couple of braces here on the back section. Um, just for support, so when the lid's moving up and down, yeah, I don't have to worry about any flex. So let's get those cut and sanded and installed, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, so what I've been doing is cutting my braces here for the back section. I cut my braces here for our exhaust fan. And I cut a couple braces here for the front. And then when we get ready to fasten that, that'll seal nice and solid. And it'll help push this down and make the inside flush. So, next step is to get some adhesive contact cement under here that way it'll close up the gaps that we have put a little glue under this one and we'll fasten on this side and this side and get those attached then on the back section here we'll put a couple of pocket screws on each side and then we'll fasten this way to the top and that should hold things together very nicely 
and we'll put a little glue under here. Now once I get those installed, then we're ready for some wiring. So real quick before I set the last two braces, this will be for the exhaust fan. I have spread my contact cement on uh, both sides and once that's all set up we'll put it in place and we'll screw fasten it from each side and then we'll go inside and press it up and that way we maintain a nice shape to the uh, ceiling. Right now it's kind of a wavy like I said this is a very thin ceiling so this is going to help and then once everything is set up I know I said I was going to use a 3M5200, but after reading the directions, it takes seven days to cure. I ain't waiting around that long. So we're going to use liquid nails. So once everything's all set up, then we'll go around and we'll bead against all the braces and all the spars and uh, make sure it's got a good contact with the ceiling. That way over time, vibrations doesn't knock things loose and things start to pad and wave a little bit. So, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, let's take one last look at this beast before we start putting some liquid nails on there. We are pretty well sealed up here. Yep, that's looking really good. Alright, I think that does it for this video. Now everything is installed. It's glued and it's screwed and laminated and so we're real close to putting the top on. Next task is to run a little bit of wiring. We're just going to have a couple lights here on the back for the hatch. We'll have a ceiling fan and a couple lights on the inside. And we'll run all the wiring into our little electrical box and then down to where our battery is going to be. There's a couple things I need to shop for. I think I already purchased lights. Meh. Uh, Got to get some wiring and then a couple of fittings for when the wiring exits the trailer. And I think that'll be kind of unique to what we're doing. It's coming along. Yep, I'm pretty pleased with it. So once the wiring's installed, then we will start insulating and then we can get the top on. So, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Stay tuned.